Audio on YouTube is super important. Here's some ways you can get better audio today. I'm Andrew Cannon. I'm joined with Daniel Battelle. And if he can, you can too. I've gotten a lot of questions from you in the audience about audio, and a lot of the questions come to similar ideals. And one of the things you want to know is how do I get my audio to sound like yours? But I'm here with Daniel, a really good friend and who has been a musician for years. And Daniel, I'm sure you can tell our audience here that every voice is different, but there are some basics that you can do at home today and links will be in the description to get better sounding audio. Daniel, what are some of the things just right off the bat people can do? The two things that you can do outside of just recording your audio is to learn how to equalize your sound and to compress your sound. Now those might sound like terms you've heard before or they may be foreign to you, but the ability to change the tonality of the recorded audio and keep those levels from peaking up and down and smoothing them out can make all the difference in how listenable your video actually is. And what I like to tell people, especially when they're getting into audio, is you need to think of audio as this. These microphones we're using are recording in what is called a flat profile. And what that means is that we can go into our editing software and change it and shape it the way we want. It's like having a slab of marble and then carving out your design that you want to do at home. So if you're not happy with your audio, then that means you can still change it and fix it to sound the way you want. So you mentioned EQ and compression. I get this question. And I've always struggled with this personally, so I'm glad to have you here. What should you do first, EQ or the compression? Typically, the way that I like to do it is EQ first. We try to balance the tonality of your audio signal. Now, you can see that Andrew and I are sitting next to each other using the exact same microphone. But if you look and visualize what our voices sound like to the actual software itself, you'll see that my voice looks like this. To a spectrum analyzer, my voice would look like this. And my voice looks like this. And my voice looks like this. So even though we're using the same equipment, our voices have different spectral regions where they might peak different frequencies. So we want to tweak those to balance them out so there's no abrasive qualities in our audio. When we talk about EQ, we're talking about the frequencies that are captured by the microphones that we're using. Now these can vary from microphone to microphone, whether you're actually using the mic in a handheld like we are, or the one that's in your phone. So the ability is to tweak those frequency so they're more pleasant to the person who's listening gives you a lot of power to control how your video sounds. And speaking of control of sound, what a lot of people don't recognize, especially on this channel, is sometimes I use an external audio recorder and that can make all the difference. You were talking about the audio being recorded to a device. Don't assume that everyone's recording directly into their camera. Always be aware of other options when it comes to these things. In this particular situation, Andrew and I are far enough away from the camera that the mic that's actually mounted to it wouldn't capture our audio in a way that would be pleasant to listen to. Take a listen now. Now this is us talking without the microphones in our hands and the camera capturing our audio. And as you can see, and probably hear, we're not happy with these results. Can you hear the pool? <laughs> it's a very nice pool. Now the other thing we want to talk about is compression, and that may not be a word that you've heard before. And that's just the ability to take the volume swells and dips and smooth them out so that the audio stays at a more natural and consistent level. And the way I like to visualize it, if you've ever played the game Pick Up Sticks, it's taking all the sticks that are scattered from different levels, putting them together in a group, so they're consistent and they have a visual look that's easy to listen to, and it doesn't go up and down frantically. And remember, all of these things are used together to bring the final audio that you hear in film, movies, and even on these kind of YouTube videos. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't achieve it too. It just means that you're going to need to work on it. And remember, if we can, you can too. There are a lot of free softwares and apps that you can use to modify your audio and improve it for your next video. And we're going to put those in the description down below. People can forgive not that great visuals but they can't forget and forgive bad audio. Do you find that to be true? Yeah, I think one of the most overlooked thing is you want to put a video up on YouTube because YouTube is a video-based platform. But one of the things that gets overlooked is the audio. If you have audio that is hard to listen to, that's abrasive, that has a lot of background noise in it, it'll tune viewers away. It might look great, but if the sound is off, then they have no interest in hanging around and watching more of your video. And that's what we always aim to do 
here on YouTube. And that's something, even if you're making a film, to just creating YouTube videos, you can do at home. Audio is 50% of the battle, and we want to help give you that information. So, Daniel, thank you so much just for talking to me just about these two simple things. Because here's the thing. Those simple practices, those things that you do over and over again, are going to help you get better audio over time. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. And it, I will show you. I it, used to get comments like this where it's like your audio sucks but now I'm having much better results and it's because of talking to people like you and doing these things on daily Daniel thank you so much now Daniel I know that while you're working on audio you recently you do music I do music <laughs> so I'm sure you use both of those things EQ and compression in that music so I if do. you guys want to check out that music you can check out the card over there on screen Daniel thank you so much for joining me today thanks for having me Andrew peace that's a lie! That's a lie! Oh my gosh. That was Nick Nimmin. Again, he tells us there's no small creators, but look at what he did. <laughs> That's our blooper. <laughs>